Hi everyone, I hope you don't mind. I'm taping this one from home. Uh, this is the video for fine art class at the Land Peter Strasburg High School. I'm Mr. Cantrell, uh, and I will be teaching your kids for the semester. What I'd like to show you today is a slide preview of the layout of the class and what's going to happen during the class, and then run through Schoology and make sure you understand how to access everything and yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Let's let's go with that. Uh, here's my contact information. If you'd like to text, or sorry, if you'd like to email me, Scott underscore Cantrell at l s pioneers dot org. Uh, you can give this call a number. This is the school number, uh, and uh, here's some of my artwork information. If you're curious uh, to take a look, overall grade in fine art is uh, the same as any other class. It's split into an eighty. 20 percent of the class is homework no matter what uh, it gets averaged to 20 percent in this class about half of the work is studio 30 percent are tests and quizzes uh, especially true now with the online element of this course uh, the art history that is covered during fine art every single one of our art classes has a supplemental uh, art history that goes along with it in this case we talk about the birth of realism in drawing and painting and so We'll look at how it starts in the early and pre-Renaissance. We'll concentrate mostly on the high Renaissance, but we'll also look at the Venetian and Northern Renaissance as it happened and what was happening in Eastern art during this time. We'll look at the art of India, uh, China, and Japan during this era as it was really a Renaissance for all of the world as we became connected for the first time. And then we'll end with coming back to the Baroque time period. There is a text for this class. It is a... Um, online text book that they have called Exploring Visual Design. Uh, it is their digital textbook and we'll use it to go over these six principles of art. In Art Survey we cover the elements of art and in our, uh, Fine Art we cover the principles of art. So this is the second level class. All of these students have had Art Survey and were successful and now they're on to the second level which is Fine Art and we build off of these ideas. It is the same format. Oftentimes, if they're successful in art survey, they are successful as well in fine art. Um, they will continue to add to their digital portfolio on Google Sites that they created during art survey, and they will continue to grow their artist website. This is also going to be utilized to sometimes hand in homework that has been created, but this is going to store all of their artwork. Basically, Google Sites is a place to create a student website, uh, and basically we're using it to create like an artist website for each student. They'll be keeping a sketchbook and they'll be two diff doing two different things in that sketchbook. They'll be drawing the facial features and hands. We'll have one week for eyes, one week for nose and mouths, one, one week for eye. I already said that. Hands, eyes, nose, mouth, skull, head proportions. Uh, and uh, the other time is collage. So we'll collage about these principles of art each time we go over them to really make sure they can apply the knowledge that they picked up in the reading. From those collages, they will work up their studio final. They will use that as reference for a drawing, a painting, or whatever else they decide to make from it. They'll have homework assignments as well uh, outside of that sketchbook, which will push their limits. Assignments. Uh, we will also create a well, I haven't thought about this through, but uh, we should be able to do this. Lockers aren't being used. Uh, so we have a locker gallery that we've created in the top of the gallery right next to the art room. Uh, and we talk about how the operations of a gallery go. Uh, and so normally each month we change this out and have a little gallery opening and take a look. Uh, we have some lights on a hardwood floor in the top section of this gallery that we call Gallery 2297. We talk about the difference between museums and galleries and um, and studios, and this gives us a little bit more of a context for the showing of art. Uh, studio assignments for this class, we'll do uh, all types of stuff. We'll start, though, with a lot of drawing. Uh, we've already gone over charcoal and an introduction to how it's utilized. Uh, we'll do a lot of that through observational drawing. Uh, they'll do still life work. We'll work from the skeleton at times. Um, and we will get into more portraiture, of course, in the sketchbooks and other things. Uh, but for this direct observation, we're introducing a lot of new stick materials. 
Besides charcoal, we'll, we'll uh, experiment and learn more about Conte and Sanguine, which are the main mediums that they used during the era of the Renaissance. Uh, and we will do some printmaking. We'll play around with the ideas of visual culture and the possibilities of presenting art in different ways. And we will kind of go back and forth the whole semester. We'll do something that's very academic based in art. And then the next studio will be something very creative and based in critical thinking. Uh, and so it'll be kind of a back and forth the whole time. Uh, as first, they're still continuing to build their skills as an artist. And second, starting to build their artistic voice and figuring out who they are and what they want to say uh, with their artwork. So we'll do some painting, which I'll try to primarily have happen in class so we don't bring that mess home to you. And they'll be doing a lot of their drawing assignments then uh, and collage work at home. So these are some examples of our first uh, painting processes. These are quick one and two day paintings uh, where they're limited on the types of materials they have to apply the paint with. Uh, and so they'll have one day where they'll use no brushes at all, just their fingers, a palette knife, and a matte chip as options for applying paint. I'm looking to figure out which one that one is. I think in this series, it's this one. Uh, so we'll build on what tools a painter uses, what tools a professional artist draw with, uh, and expand on their knowledge base of uh, what they can use to paint with, to draw with, to collage with. So this entire painting was done with a palette knife, no brushes at all. It doesn't mean that it becomes less realistic necessarily. Uh, it just gives you a, a different uh, surface quality. We'll concentrate on some painting as well, concentrate on planes and understanding color and how it acts. And we'll push our limits and understandings with that. We'll do some watercolor techniques uh, where I usually utilize working from photography. So we'll talk about the differences between working in person from direct observation to working from photo. And we will end by doing some large portraiture um, and a final that leads to the culmination of all this and they have a lot of say in what they get to do. Two dates and things are the same as uh, they ever were. Let's correct that. <laughs> uh, homework, everyday ladies letter grade off. In class studios, they can resubmit as many times as they'd like. Uh, missed quizzes and missed tests, they'll need to see me, but most of that is online at this point. And so at any point they could go on and take care of those. So here we are in Schoology under the fine arts page. Uh, this is how I see it. Uh, you and your students may see it slightly differently, but uh, you should see back to school night stuff where you got your video in the first place uh, is here temporarily for you underneath that then. Uh, these are three links that will always be there for your kids. Uh, the first is a Google Meets. Uh, every Wednesday we meet on Google Meets at 12 o'clock during our class period uh, as a full class. Uh, and so that link is always there for them for quick and easy access. Underneath that is this week's schedule. Uh, if they're ever unsure what's supposed to be going on, they can click on that and that will link them to a list of the uh, daily activities with links to everything they are to accomplish. Underneath that is a link to their digital textbook. Uh, this, uh, they've already signed on and logged into their sketch or onto their textbook. Uh, and this is um, uh, bookmarked. I've had that bookmark that on the first day. Uh, to make sure that they have immediate and quick access to it. But this is always there as a backup. Underneath that will always be the assignments for the week. As we accomplish and finish these assignments, they will be put into the folders below and organized. So if students ever need to go back to anything or they've been missing class for whatever reason, everything is still there. They can still access it, uh, but it would be put together within these folders. If it's a studio and the studios folder and so on and so forth. Uh, but they have the assignments of this week there above for online and in-class assignments. And when we are done, it is put below. So there's not a ton of extra stuff there. The links at the top are assignments for the week, and then everything else goes in the folders below. Uh, a good place to look for things is in your calendar, of course. Uh, the only issue with the calendar at this point is that if you're looking ahead, uh, the exact due date may not be correct because I shift these things from day to day. So for example, this charcoal practice, we did this in class on Thursday. 
So the group that's in Thursday, Friday, we did that on Thursday. They are going to be doing that on Tuesday because we don't have school on Monday. And so I have shifted it to Tuesday. But if you would have worked, looked earlier in the week, it would have been there for Thursday. So that is the only thing that could be confusing as things shift depending on when you're in and outside of the classroom. Uh, but the day of, it will always be accurate. If you have any questions along the way, uh, you can always shoot me a message. If you'd like to meet for the uh, back to school night Zoom meeting, we are on for uh, 15 minutes there, which isn't a lot of time. So if you find that you can't make that time or we don't have enough time, please feel free to give me a call, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, uh, and I'd be happy to uh, communicate with you about any needs or topics that you want to discuss. So thank you for watching this video. And uh, maybe I'll see you here in a little bit at our back to school night official Zoom meeting. All right. Uh, thank you so much.